Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and is it time to move off of TrueNAS Core? Well, yes, I've been saying that for quite a while. You may have noticed it has not been getting a lot of updates or feature changes. They've been doing some maintenance on it to keep it functioning, and you can still use it. It's not going to expire, but new features aren't coming to it, and I want to make that very clear. The new version of TrueNAS, which is going to be named TrueNAS Community, will be here in April of 2025. So yes, it's time to move on from TrueNAS Core, especially if you want any of the new features like ZFX expansion, the updated way that they're doing deduplication, or really any new features. But that's what this video is about, is the migration path, how to get it done. So let's get started. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that'll get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Before even reading this document, please pause and confirm and validate that you have a backup. That is an important aspect of it. ZFS is a wonderfully resilient operating system, but it is also complicated to recover when you have goofed things up and done a partial migration or broke something or forgot your encryption keys, which makes it an impossible to recover system. Therefore, make sure you have a backup. Make sure if you have encryption that you have a backup of those keys. Now let's talk about how to migrate from TrueNAS Core. It is a one-way operation. So when you do upgrades for Core or upgrades for Scale, which is now called Community, you're going to have boot slices on the boot device that allow you to simply go backwards. That does not work when you do the migration from TrueNAS Core to TrueNAS Community Edition. It's not going to work that way. It is a one-way operation. You can restore from the downloaded backup file. We'll get to that in a moment. So if there was some reason you had to go back, it's not end of the world. And of course, this is not affecting your data set where the data should be at. This is for the boot device that we're talking about. Now, what can or cannot migrate is the most popular question and often what's keeping people back because there's some real issues here that you may run into. First, especially if you came and have a pool old enough to date back to the free NAS days from years ago and you've just kept migrating forward, if you're using the GELI encryption, it's not going to be able to migrate at all. That is a free BSD feature. If you think you have that type of encryption, but you're not sure, you can simply run a ZFS status on the pool. And if it ends in that GLI, you'll know for sure that that's the encryption you're using. That encryption has been out of date for a while. The normal ZFS encryption, which is supported in TrueNAS Core, can be migrated to TrueNAS Community Edition. So I just wanted to point that one out. That's a complete stopper and you can't go any further on that one. Uh, Microsoft OneDrive Cloud Sync credentials and tasks. Uh, OneDrive compatibility is not available in SureNAS anymore as of right now. I don't know if it's coming in the future, but it's not. So that may be a stopper for you. Other ones here, mail form certificates, as in self-signed certificates, is going to rebuild them and plugins and jails. So if you've built a bunch of things on the plugin and jail ecosystem that is within SureNAS core, Sorry, that's not a one-to-one -one migration. The system is very, very different, although conceptually the same, but functionally different on how jails work versus how the current implementation of Docker is inside of TrueNAS community. So there's no one-to-one -one migration from one to the other, but hopefully you have all your data saved on a pool. So the data that you use for some of those plugins should be the same. For example, something like SyncThing that does synchronization, there's not a one one migration, but the config file for sync thing could be migrated. So you wouldn't have to set that up again, but you'll have to manually extract or make sure you understand where that's located when you set it up. ZFS tunables, ZFS boot environments, that goes to the boot environments for rolling back. So that once again, not something you can do. SMB auxiliary parameters. Yeah, this one's a big one here. If you have a bunch of custom parameters, you might not need them because they didn't just randomly eliminate it. They made some of these checkboxes. So if you have something really unique, double check that that's a feature supported if you need that feature in the upcoming version. So that's something worth noting there. 
AFP shares also do not transfer, but migrate into an SMB share with AFP compatibility enabled. Yeah, double check that in case you're using something very specific in that, but generally that's not an issue, but just something to note there where they move that to. There's no longer a dedicated AFP share. SaaS multipath that's been eliminated. They've talked about this. The devs have talked about it. It just creates a lot of potential for people goofing things up. So that's not a feature. So if you have some absolute reliance on it, that's going to be a non-starter as well. TrueNAS 13 account names beginning with a number are not supported in TrueNAS 2404. Usernames must begin with the letter or an underscore before attempting migration. Review the local user accounts to rename replace any accounts that begin with a numeric character. So this is one more thing to take into consideration. I don't know that's really common, but just in case it is, or you wonder what happened to that user that didn't migrate over, that would be why. And the last two things I want to mention here are the virtual machines. Hopefully you're not running a bunch of them in BSD. This is also going to be really tricky, especially with the upcoming TrueNAS 25 where they're changing it again. So yeah, they're going to be a little tricky to migrate, especially because if you're using the Grub bootloader versus the UEFI bootloader, please make note here that TrueNAS 13x earlier, VMs with UEFI and Grub bootloaders, TrueNAS 22.02 and later does not support Grub bootloader, VMs configured with UEFI bootloader can migrate, VMs configured with Grub bootloader are unable to migrate. So that's really important note right there. I didn't have any trouble with the networking, but if VMs need access to local NAS storage, you need to create a bridge and assign them to the VM. Application sandboxes that need access to local storage within the container must use a bridge or mount for local storage and a host for the application. I will note, and because this is a release candidate, when I was testing this, migrating it to version 25, I did have some trouble with the networking. I had to basically reconfigure it. The network settings didn't migrate over, but they do in the 24 version. So depending on when you're watching this, and it may be fixed because right now 25 isn't release candidate, but I did actually set up a TrueNAS core system and test several migration options. We'll get to that in a moment. Now I will leave a link to this because I want to mention that they do have a little further notes here, but also some checklists if you want to really go through and make sure you've checked each one of these things to make sure they're right. There's a couple other little details in here that might be important, but this checklist should be everything you need. Now let's get to the actual migration process. Now the first step is to make sure you're running the latest version of TrueNAS 13, which 13.0 U67 is technically the latest, but there is a community edition patch you can load as well. Either one of those will work. And you can go check for updates and you can go here and it appears that you can migrate. I found this to be kind of broken. You can do this one right here, Dragonfish. This did work because of the same warnings I mentioned before, but the recommended way to do this is with an ISO install. That'll just be a much cleaner way to do this because when we go to general, save config, export it. And of course, right here, this is grayed out. It would be another way to tell whether or not you have those type of older style encryption keys that are not compatible. You put in a password, you hit save, you get a file. This is the easiest way to do it because now all we have to do is load the new version of TrueNAS to our boot drive, and then it will import all the settings. Now, just to show you really quick here, we have storage, pools, we have a test data set, test data set with share. We go to snapshots, there's some snapshots on here. And if we go to tasks, I have a periodic snapshot task that you can see has been running here for a little while. This allows me to show you that when I do the import to the new version, everything will work. So let's get to loading the new version of TrueNAS. Now we're gonna go through a standard install of TrueNAS and it says install upgrade, but it's just gonna be an install. And we wanna go down here. This is the boot pool. We do not want to mess with anything in our test pool that we have there. So easily identify which one's the right one to install to. Hit OK. Proceed with installation. Yes. Yes. Set the password. Hit OK. We'll go ahead and say yes to that. And away we go. All right, we're going to log in with the credentials we created during an install. And this is a clean install. So if we go to storage, there's no pools. We can technically import the old pool. It will see it. But of course, I don't have the encryption keys. It won't have all of the other settings. So what we want to do is go here to system, general settings, manage configuration, upload file, choose file. And we're going to choose that TrueNAS file that we downloaded before we erase the boot system. Very important step there. Go ahead and hit upload. It's going to upload, load all those configurations, load the keys for the pool, reboot, and it'll be into a working TrueNAS system. All right, now that it's rebooted, we're going to log in as root because that is the user from my TrueNAS core system. It erases the TrueNAS underscore admin that I created during the install. And now we're logged back into our TrueNAS. We look at our data set. There's our data set. Data set with share. 
and we can even see the snapshots are here. If we want to look at data protection, there's our snapshot task. And if we go over here to the network shares, we can see that the test shares set up as well. So everything was imported, the data sets there, the data set encryption keys came in. So we still have the pool being unlocked by the key that was installed in there. And now we can start setting up apps or any of the other features that we want. But the functionality, the data is all there, everything's all set. As I said earlier, you don't have to move off to your NAS core. There's not an actual end of life date that has been set just yet. And they have been patching when they find flaws. But as you may have noticed, there's not any new features coming. So when people start asking like, will ZFS expansion or any of those features come? My answer is always the same and it's been, no, it's not coming. It's time to move if you want any of those new ZFS features. And as I showed in this video, it's relatively easy to do. But if you're not moving, let me know why in the comments down below. I love hearing from all of you. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to my forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com, where we can have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Connect with you on the socials over at lawrencesystems.com with all the different socials you'll find me on there or subscribe to the newsletter. Also hit up the Chirnas forums in our place to have a discussion about this or any migration problems you might have. All right, thanks. Thank you.